Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, nutsack! I'll just say the tall one as well. Means. Ooh! Silence of the lambs right now. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw her to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you've never seen yourself ma making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. Yeah, that, that's 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 some bait. That's some base shit right there. Childhood friendship. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. Okay. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. Our character, Mr. John, read it. <laughs> However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha! Ah, ah. I overslept again! But I caught you this time! Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh? You say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's me, Noink. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Oh, man. Fine, fine! But you did wait for me, after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Oink, have you decided on a club to join yet? And Japanese school always... When I was a teenager, Japanese school always just struck me as being very captivating. Because it was like... It just looked way better and more organized and less of a nightmare than, a, than like, Western schooling. But I sort of doubt at this point in my life that all this... All these positive characteristics of anime schools... I have a feeling that they, they aren't really so tightly woven and as perfect as they are in, the sh in like, anime shit, you know? It's probably just as fucking crazy, you know? A club? I told you already, I'm not in not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking, either. Eh? That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Make Sayori sound like Jason Statham? I don't know how to mimic that guy's voice. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. I know you're happy now, but I died at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> you thrust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! <laughs> what am I- what am I doing with my life? He's a guy who sells overcooked hot dogs in the New York subway with greasy chest hair and a bootleg cross necklace. <laughs> School day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Lo. Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. 
Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Whoops. I think I skipped on accident. Oh, no, I did skip. I just... Okay, never mind. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, you could come to my club. Sayori... Yeah? There is no way I am going to your club. Uh, needy. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. Do you remember the episode of the Powerpuff Girls where those middle-aged fat men cosplays as the Powerpuff Girls? Yes! I fucking remember that. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Are we playing as Dagoth Ur? <laughs> what a grand and intoxicating innocence. Come, Nerevar, let us go to the anime club. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly followed Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori is always says not Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a oh, wait no it, I'm sorry I complete they, they both have pink hair they both have like lighter like sort of pink hair and so I just thought they were the same fucking person. Seriously, you brought a boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. I don't want to make a voice for all of them. What am I? What am I even saying? I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care enough. Why isn't our teenage boy self just like... Like... <laughs> Obviously in real Japanese high school, people are not getting into weird harem... harem uh, plot lines on the regular in any capacity. But manga and anime really likes to try and tell people that that is exactly what happens every time and all day, every day. <laughs> this club is full of incredibly cute girls. Uh-oh. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry Natsuki. Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. My favorite type of female voices, Jason Statham, John Stamos, Sylvester Stallone, and Dagoth Earth. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. He's also the one who made cup made cupcakes according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quiet Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Uh, hmm. Who would I give the Dagoth Ur voice? Hmm. D don't say things like that. <laughs> I don't know. Yuri, who appears comparable, comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. And she looks like she's six feet tall because of the perspective... Like, if we take this as, like, a perspective lens from our character's eyeballs, we're, like, as tall as this- as Natsuki's mouth. Like, we're like a midget, you know? Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... It, you too, Monica. Gub, sit down, Loic. We made room for you at the table, so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. 
Okay, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Oh, I don't have a choice, huh? Okay. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! <laughs> Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes, decorated to look like little crabs. Cats, excuse me. Are we gonna eat all these cupcakes and shit green? Cause I really don't need- I really don't need cupcakes. Hehehe, <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica, I follow. It's delicious. Sayori talks with her mouthful and has already managed to get icing on her face. <laughs> I put ayahuasca in these cupcakes, ready to meet Azura and moi. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Guys, in how many bites do you eat your cupcakes? Because depending upon how many bites you take, you you know, Tyler 1 might apparate into into your home, you know, at 3 a.m. tonight and scream at you for eat for eating cupcakes in too few bites. Or too many bites. What do you mean you do two and not three? You have fucking giant goblin heads! Your heads are too big! Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. She is waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... I haven't heard this some... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or... So my guess, guy... So I know... What I know about this game, guys... The only thing I know about it... Is that there's weird meta aspects to this. There's like weird meta gaming shit that happens. Other than that, I don't really know what happens in this game. So my guess immediately... Right off the bat is that our protagonist is going to notice that for some reason his life has become a harem anime. And he's going to find it very weird because it's he's not going to understand. He's not going to understand why it suddenly started happening. And then the game is going to start breaking the fourth wall and addressing us as a person. That is what my guess is going to be. Ah, I thought you technically did. Sayori said, Well, maybe. But not for you. Y you know, you, dummy. Baka. <laughs> all right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before sitting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole- oh, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I- I guess? <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Huh? Th that's not- Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean that, you know, I believe you. <laughs> well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. Well, we'll make we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? You're going in the soup, hombre. As president as president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decide to start your own club? You'd probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major club. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to get, how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. 
Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. And I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. Is this... This, that, that's a weird series of sentences to say because literature is such a fucking massive, over-scoping type of hobby and art craft. It's like, you can make a club out of just a subset of literature, right? Like, what if to attract people's attention to this literature club, Monica, like, put up posters of, like, Dune or some shit. Like, who, like, translated from English to Japanese, fucking Dune. <laughs> like, don't you think some teenagers would be like, whoa, that's so weird and cool. Yuppie yeah, Psycho being real just means Paranormal Club would be way more exciting. If by exciting you mean blood-curdlingly terrifying as actual monsters chase after us, then yes, that is definitely more exciting. Real talk, I know these anime games are about dating and not realism, but so many of the dating candidates in this game have the most boring personalities known to man. Yeah. I think... Uh, you were asking me earlier about, like, oh, what porn games do people play for the story? There's this one pornographic game that people do play for the story that's, like, about a bunch of disabled people in a, Jap in a Japanese school. Like a, like a school for disabled people in, Jap in Japan. So it's this visual novel about all these people with cripples. Right? And, like... People love the game because love that game apparently because of how incredible the characters are written. Katawa Shoujo, yeah, yeah. I didn't remember its name, but that yeah, I, I, now I now I remember. Yeah, people people apparently liked that like that game quite a lot because of the character writing. But you know, to to my chagrin, when I eventually learned learned that Katawa Shoujo was actually like like it was a dating hentai game i was like what the fuck and then i stopped paying attention because i was like what 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 why are people going crazy over this what fucking uh well japanese vn i played was uh the corp was fucking corpse party and that made me want to spoon my eyeballs out manga i mutter quietly to myself half joking natsuki's head suddenly perks up it looks like she wants to say something but she keeps quiet N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deeper and complex fantasy world. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of our own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? This, this type of girl, you you buy her a novelization, a collector's edition novelization of uh, Nine Lives on the Nostromo. <laughs> Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What, what gives you that idea? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, nutsack! <laughs> I, I can't read that. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ. You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. Hey, <laughs> your cupcakes, your boobs. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Correct, you're not. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. When I first played DDLC, I was texting my friend about it and I kept calling her nutsack and my friend was like, please stop this. <laughs> Holy fucking shit.
Why don't you share them sometime? Th no! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not very confident, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have any writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your own work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I want to read everyone's poems! We all sit in silence for a moment. Sha! I have an idea, everyone! Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own! Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Yeah, let's do it! Let's do it! <laughs> Plus, now that we have new members, I think it will help us all get a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Oink? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Huh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and um... I lose my train of thought. <laughs> All four girls stare at me back with dejected eyes. <laughs> oh, Christ. When I was a teen, when I was a preteen boy, like I ate, I would eat, I ate this sh this nonsense up. I ate this harem manga nonsense up, where it's just like girls like you for literally no reason whatsoever. <laughs> it's it, but but like in retrospect, like trying to place myself in that position, it's very awkward. It's very fucking awkward. It's unbelievably <laughs> uh, awkward. Roses are red, violets are blue. I shit in your microwave. What can you do? Uh, nothing. I'll throw the microwave out, I guess. That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. My poem for the club. Uh, <laughs> okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yeah, I'm so happy. Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Uh, hey, you really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. That's 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 a relatable mindset. That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. Man, the protag is so fucking boring. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Uh, what? Doki doki. This is this is a heartbeat sound effect, I believe. If I remember my from when I used to be a massive weeb. This is this doesn't feel like a poem. Like what? What? Extraordinary imagination, intellectual. Uh. Philosophy? Uh, no, horror. Frightening. Yes, frightening. Contamination. Mister. Just having a seizure in front of a thesaurus. Yeah, more or less. That's almost happening, happening literally. 
Anxiety. Climax. Oh, no. No. Pain. How the fuck do you write a poem like this? It's literally just... It's just random words. Yeah, like, I don't... I don't understand. Unrequited. I don't... It's a fancy word. I don't know if it's correct, though. Explode! <laughs> Rotag wants to explode inside something, that's for that's for sure. What kind of fucking ass poem is that? It's a bunch of random words. Hi again, Oink. Glad to see you didn't run away on us, haha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I, I, I at least keep my word. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too! I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Maski, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Maski finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Oiko always gives his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. I bet Natsuki reads Rent a Girlfriend. What a strange fucking mark that left on the internet when it was still the big thing, because people were, like, freaked out by it, and apparently it had a lot of really high highs and a lot of low lows in its writing, to a point where people, like, got, like, throttled by how inconsistent it was until it just faded out of existence and nobody cared anymore. And you almost set your house on fire once! Is that so? <laughs> You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How oh, come? You and I can become good friends, too! Uh, um... Sayori? Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh! You even brought you something today, you know? W wait Sayori! Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's, it's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal, but it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I was thinking. Guess that means up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal of it if you don't want want it to be. All right. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. Please let it be Frank Herbert's Dune translated to Japanese. Please. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so I hope you can keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. Oh, it's not... It's not Dune. She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not, despite me not reading much? Yuri, thank you, I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Dune but a picture book. Oh, God. Phew! Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't tell but notice her immense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the corner of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah! Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. 
She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. <gasps> that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing her, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so that's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah, uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Ah, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. The only thing I sort of find silly, though, still, is, like, uh, old fantasy being, like, having this massive proliferation of just people who are, like, almost naked with swords, and, like, every story is the same thing about big buff, big dick man finding woman and using his sword to kill bad guy. Like, that, that was kind of just obnoxiously overabundant in that in that era of fantasy. And it's just kind of annoying, but there's still a lot of really good stuff that uh, you can derive from that era. Quite a lot of good stuff. Definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. That's so. What's it about, anyway? Mm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back! The book is titled Portrait of Markov. Soren Markov? Innistrad? Holy shit, it's Jover! She's gonna summon Emrakul and end the world! <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna crack the moon open like an egg. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front, on the front cover. All right, I just want to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? I mean, I could definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. You know, I fuck with this. This, 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 is, this is the type of shit you like hearing out of somebody who analyzes stories. It's almost like the, the harem subjects have their personalities custom built to fill a very specific niche. Right, right, right. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like you, sh I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's the literature club, after all. Ah, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y you don't have to! <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah. Uh, yeah. 
Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just not something I'm very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. <laughs> Yuri, my Enwa, please just grow a little backbone. It's good for you, bestie. Let's be real here, though. We we both know how how awkward she feels. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. Yeah, that... Oh, man. I get this really... Like, if somebody is looming nearby me while I'm on my computer, it's like, it's like a sixth sense. And I just get this looming feeling of being watched, even if the person isn't fucking watching me. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. I'm so left-handed brained, I thought that this was- I thought I was picturing this in the reverse positions. That's how left-handed I am. This is the most annoying way to read ever, I'm not waiting for her crusty ass to finish reading the page while I'm done two minutes earlier. Yeah. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Uh? To turn the page? Ah, sorry. I think I get a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah thanks We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it on my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning the page almost feels like an intimate exchange. <sighs> we have known this person for two days. She might think this is romantic for the first chapter, but she's going to get real sick of it when the boy wonder here takes ten minutes to figure out the words, what the word scary means. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I imagine that, like, if you're gonna be doing, like, intimate reading type stuff, then, like, you have one person read out loud. Otherwise, you both have to just sit in silence waiting for you to, like, assumedly both be done, even though your reading speed is not likely to be the same. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah, Yuri exhales. Spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, it's not... It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read with you? Um, I, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm, in that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reason. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. I will not remember this mental note, because mental notes do not work for me. But then again, I am a Mary Sue, zero personality protagonist, so perhaps I will magically remember this mental note that would otherwise be unrememberable. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? It, yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Boy, did I, Monica, listen to this. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. 
On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composite notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh, well, obviously we're going for Yuri, so sure. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? D did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then it ends up covering her whole face. I... Uh... He's going to hate me. Um... You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Huh? That's... I, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? How do I eat roasted crab if I'm a... Wait, that's not going to be a problem. Yeah, remember, there are different species of crab. It's not cannibalism if it's a slightly different species from you. You know, we used to eat Africans all the time, you know. <gasps> joking, joking. Don't, don't ban me, Twitch. <laughs> don't, don't, don't ban me, Twitch, please. Uh, I have an a there's an African in the chat. It's fine. It's fine. Don't ban me, Twitch. <laughs> Yuri takes a deep breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, uh, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two, work, the two together. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to, to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. You mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share the th my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if there's th that's a rare opportunity for her. I was worried if I had a style or not once. Got easier when I realized I don't fucking care. Ghost Under the Light. The tendrils of corruption, I mean, the tendrils of my hair, illuminate beneath the amber glow. Storming, I mean, bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstand the test of time. Walk, I mean, the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickeningly blue-green hue of the future sight. I mean, the future. I, st I, I bay, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I ephemerate back. I mean, I mean, I flicker back. <laughs> My man was reading Scribe! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I do like this poem here, now that I'm reading it to myself. It, it reminds me of, uh... In fact, this directly reminds me of Slay the Princess. You ever listen to, uh, like, low... low guitar beats like this? And just sort of have a thought in your mind of, what if it's just farting? Whoa. 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 Cause it, it's, it's like, it's like the, it's like the tuba of string instrument notes. <laughs> of string instrument chords. Uh, I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Yeah, because I'm fucking stupid. Ah, uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Huh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. 
Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Hoo-hoo. <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Oink. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Yeah, I didn't think of a ghost at all either. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah, if anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Oink. Ah, me too. All right, now I'm going to show it to Sayori, because she's our childhood friend. Because here's the thing, even though we're going for, uh, Yuri, the easy second choice is the childhood friend. This is a good poem, Oink. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. That's why it impressed me. Like I said before, Oink, deep down you're not selfish at all, you know. Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. <laughs> oh, you piece of shit, Protag. I am only here to get my dick sucked. Great. What, what a likable protagonist. Me writing a detailed 70k word novel about if the Harry Potter world had skooma. You know what's funny is that in Elder Scrolls lore, skooma is just kinda just... It's just kind of an ordinary type of magical drug. It's not... It, like... The bullshit in Oblivion and Skyrim, where you can glitch the game and make yourself fly... Like, that shit is... Not even vaguely accurate to what the intention of the fucking item is. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Uh, we'll see about that. I'm not gonna lie. I started. I the first word my my brain went to right here was forehead, except I thought it said fuckhead, and I was about to say what? What? <laughs> Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish, the rainy uh, wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue, it's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad, I want breakfast. Okay. Okay, you say Mentat, and I think of Dune. What the fuck is Mentat supposed to be in Fallout? Sayori. Are you fucking trying to cross the block in opposition colors? This gag territory. This is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? it sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. 
but next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Yeah, Monica kind of creeps me out. I feel like there's something weird going on with Monica. I'm gonna talk to Natsuki first. Oink, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? What? Harsh. What? You expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer! Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about? Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I'd tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race. Owls can see, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Um... Okay. That's like, uh... uh preschooler, preschooler rhyming stuff? Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well... Because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then make it, made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what means. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Anyway, want to share your problem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Oink. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. Hand Monica my poem. Mm hmm Great job, one. I was going to go oh in my head while reading it. Or I was going oh in my head while reading it. <laughs> it's really metaphorical. I'm not really... I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing, writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who, usually, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write th like that e effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it but just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. Everyone else might be a bit biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find out what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> uh, anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Wow, it's long! Oh god, it's so long, how dare you! Hole in the wall. Oh no, it's a glory hole. Why did she write a poem about a glory hole? No. <laughs> Why? <clears throat> it couldn't have been me. See? The direction? The spa- The spackle- The spackle? See? The direction the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late, my retinas. Already scorched with a per with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Monkey writing about California. <laughs> that, that's kind of a, a this, this is kind of like a horror a horror writing. Like it's kind of scary. 
So, what do you think? Mmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. Was that the inspiration behind this one? Monkey, autism, and nutsack. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure how I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. This is a uh, foreshadowing, right? She's talking about how she's looking out and we're looking in because we are the player looking into the game and she is looking out of the game at us. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chat chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, they watch... I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. <laughs> What's with this language? Huh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say... I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is... cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can it be that cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say some. You know, I was trying to say something nice. Huh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um. Well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Oink did, too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some, suggest some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Oink liked my poem, too, you know. And even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki, suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, eh? That's not what I... Uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Oink appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? How are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. <laughs> I was the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Oink started showing up? N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! <laughs> uh, I don't like fighting, guys! Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Ah. <laughs> uh... God. If I didn't know that if, if I didn't know this was like a prelude to a much more serious meta story, I would be I would be cringing right now. Like on a corpse party level. Your Sayori voice is big the cat. Eh, I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to imitate 
that mouth full of water and, and red meat noise that, like, uh, Vin Diesel sort of has going. That's, like, what I'm trying to do with the voice. That's so accurate for Vin's voice. I never thought of that. Yeah, it's like his tongue is swollen and he has one tonsil. Like, only one of them got removed. Like, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Oink. W wait! There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language! It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste! You understand that, right, Oink? Um... Um... I assume Help Me Sayori is... You trying to get favor with the childhood friend, and then these two are getting favor with them. Natsuki... You're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait! That's not an excuse for you to be so mean! You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all! Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Mmm, I understand. Yuri. Huh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. W well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it and become something really personal. Yeah, I don't like- I don't like the protag. <laughs> I don't like- I fucking hate this shit so much. You know, like, in the harem manga I read as a teenager, there was still a fucking plot that was not related to the main character just trying to fuck. Like, there was actual plot shit going on. Even if it was, like, rom-com stuff, it was still, like, a real plot and not just I am going to say whatever will get me vagina on my face within the shortest period of time. Like, even when I was a teenager, I did not read this sh this type of shit with where the characters behave like this. And yeah, I remember Heaven's Lost Property is so weird. It's such a weird fu the more I think about it. But the thing that I'll never forget about Heaven's Lost Property is the Obama chapter. Do you remember that, Rag? Do you remember the actual Obama chapter? <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> They're still putting their feelings into it and become something really personal. You don't! You want- Oh my god. I don't know how- So I don't know how good the anime is. For Heaven's Lost Property. Um, but in- In the fucking manga, there is literally a chapter where, like, some weird fuck-up happens and the angels, like, have a fight or something, or they make enough of a scene that it- That, like, an American- The American military base- nearby in Japan um they they pick up something on their readings and they go crazy and they think that like Korea's they think that like there's terrorists in Japan and there are panels of the entire US military mobilizing to go invade Japan to protect it from terrorism <laughs> and there's a part where there is a panel where literally Barack Obama in the manga panel is making a speech in front of all the soldiers and just saying, yes, we can. <laughs> and then in a panel afterward, the American soldiers show up in the panel and they're crying while they hand while they're holding their guns saying, I wish we did need to liberate the world from all the evils of terrorism. These poor people need our help. We will save them. <laughs> they're cr they're crying because they're sad that that the world is so fucked up. 
They're sad that the world is so fucked up and that these people need their help. <laughs> so the whole US military like just converges on like the park place where they picked up like the angels fighting on their readings. And they end up like finding nothing to shoot at. <laughs> they find nothing and then they just go home. <laughs> And the main character is, like, smoldering or something because there was, like, some weird shit that... Some gag explosion he got caught in or something from the Americans using bombs or whatever. I don't know. It was so fucking hysterical. The fucking... The fucking Obama chapter. <laughs> of Heaven's Lost Property. Oh, God. Actually, you know what? I need to, I need to ask Rag. Heaven's Lost Property is the one with the angels that are, like, robot angels. And it's like an etchy harem manga with these angel robot girls. We're talking about the same thing, right? Because I remember that primarily by its Japanese name. Or rather, I just don't remember what its translated name is, I should say. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's Nekopara. I don't know what Nekopara is. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that. I... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well if you just told her how you felt. Then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized, don't you think don't you think you should too? Because there's there's only a certain amount, even when I was a a single teenage boy, there's only so much like uh cock tease between a real plot and the PG-13 etchy, where after a certain point I was just sick of the plot not fucking happening. Like, I was just so- I was getting so sick of it, I was like, I am tired of the non-titties that you're not showing me, but you're also not showing me the plot. So, like, <laughs> I fucking stopped. I never finished that- I never finished that one. It just- it just became so fucking frustrating after a point. She's trapped at this point, being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I ended up even feeling bad for her. Uh, um... Sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, Sayori, she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm gonna do that. Us. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki? She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone have gotten... How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well... All right, I believe you. Thanks, Oink. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as part of this club now. I have known you for two days. Uh, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said. About, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, huh? What did Natsuki say? Uh, um, well, never mind that. I'm going to go make some tea. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Oink, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. 
So, your poems will turn out even better. With any luck, that means I can do at least... I can... Oh, I can at least do a better job of impressing those I want to impress. This motherfucker, I hate this character. <laughs> I nod to myself with newfound determination. Oi! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Ori, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. They have known me for two days. That's... Uh -huh. Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. What if he's only joining the club to fuck the girl's mom? <laughs> oh my god. I love her ma ca comma mom versus I love her mom. <laughs> god. Blech. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said there... I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Oh. Okay, well. Stacy's mom has got it going on, and the game is meta, and I have a small dong. <laughs> okay, but holy-